This is a tutorial on solving multi-step inequalities. When we solve multi-step inequalities, we use all the same properties of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division that we use to solve one-step inequalities. So here we're given three examples and we're told to solve and graph the solution. So let's start with the first one. We have 3x plus 7 has to be greater than 19. So the first step to solve this for x, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. If we do that, we'll get 3x has to be greater than 12. Our next step will be to divide both sides by 3, and we'll end up with x has to be greater than 4. So this is our solution, x has to be greater than 4, and to graph that, we go to 4 on our number line, and we put an open circle, and we put an open circle because this is a greater than sign, not a greater than or equal to, so 4 is not a valid solution, but everything greater than 4 is, so we shade everything to the right on the number line because every number to the right or greater than 4 is a solution for this inequality. Our next example is negative 2 thirds x plus 5 sixth has to be less than or equal to 1 third. Now I don't like fractions, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply this by its common denominator, which is 6. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6, and if I do that, negative 2 thirds times 6 will be a negative 4 x, 5 sixth times 6 is just 5, and this has to be less than or equal to 1 third times 6, which is just 2. Our next step will be to subtract 5 from both sides, because we're trying to get x alone on one side of the inequality, and if we do that we'll have negative 4 x has to be less than or equal to negative 3. And then our last step will be to divide both sides by negative 4. Now negative 4x divided by negative 4 is a positive x, but if we divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse our inequality sign. So if we have a less than or equal to and we reverse it, this becomes a greater than or equal to. And then a negative 3 divided by negative 4 is just a positive 3 fourths. So our solution then is x has to be greater than or equal to 3 fourths. Now to graph that on the number line, we go to 3 fourths, which is a little bit less than 1, and we put a solid point because this is a greater than or equal to, so 3 fourths is a valid solution. And then since it's greater than or equal to, we shade every number on the number line that's greater than that number, or everything to the right on the number line. Our next example is negative 4 times x minus 3 is less than 12. Now you can distribute this negative 4 in if you want to, but I think it's easier just to start and divide both sides by negative 4. If we do that, the negative 4 on the outside of the parentheses and the negative 4 we're dividing will cancel and we'll be left with just x minus 3. Now we've divided both sides by a negative number, which means we have to reverse our inequality sign. So if we have a less than, this becomes a greater than. And then 12 divided by negative 4 is just negative 3. Our next step then will be to add 3 to both sides because we're trying to get x alone on one side of the expression. If we do that, we'll be left with x needs to be greater than negative 3 plus 3 is just 0. So x needs to be greater than 0. And to graph that, this is a greater than sign, not a greater than or equal to. So we put an open circle at 0. And then it's everything greater than that number, so everything to the right on the number line is a valid solution. So we shade everything to the right, or everything greater than zero, on the number line. Next, let's see how we can apply this. 
Here we have a word problem that states Jim needs to average better than 85% on the last two math tests of the year to get an A in the class. If Jim gets an 87 on the first test, what does he need to get on the last test? Well, to solve our inequality, first we have to set it up. There's two tests. The first one, he gets an 87, and the second one, we don't know what he's going to get. And the average of those two tests, then, would be an 87 plus the score on the second test. And then to find the average, we divide all of this by 2, because there's two tests. And we know that he has to score better than 85 which means this has to be greater than 85. So here we have an inequality set up and we just have to solve for x. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. If we do that, these 2's will cancel and we'll be left with 87 plus x on the left hand side and this has to be greater than 85 times 2, which is 170. Our next step will be to subtract 87 from both sides. And if we do that, we'll get x needs to be greater than 83. And that's our solution. Jim needs to score better than an 83 on his last test to get an A in the class. And that completes the tutorial on solving multi-step inequalities.